How can it be that the collaboration between the social partners of Norway's working life is less like a boxing match and more like a dance? How do they handle strikes, demonstrations and discontent? And why do they even bother to cooperate when the, so the social partners have such conflicting interests? I am proud to invite the most powerful people in the Norwegian working life to answer these questions. From our government, the Minister of Labour herself, Mrs. Hadia Tajik, and the boss of all of Norway's bosses, Ole Erik Almlid, Director General of the Confederation of Norwegian Enterprise. Peggy Hessen Fölsvik, Secretary General of ELO, the biggest and most powerful uh, confederation of labor unions. Welcome. Thank you. First of all, a difficult word, the tripartite collaboration. Each of you have different approach to it and you have a conflicting interest in it. Yet you have to work together. Why do you all think this is the right way to manage our working life? Uh, let's give you a few sentences each. Mr. Almred uh, or Ule Erik, which you. is more, no, a more Norwegian way to address you by your first name. As the head of the largest organization for employers and the leading business uh, lobbyist, what's in it for you? Thank you, Linda. Actually, this model, this three-part collaboration, is a construction that has served Norway very well for over decades. And it serves Norway very well today, and maybe for 50, 100 years in front of us. It's a model that has given us high levels of employment, low levels of conflict, and have made business able to adapt uh, new technologies, new markets. And for us, it's also a model who is paying off. We see it on the bottom line because less conflicts is very good news for Norwegian business. It's a more stable system. We see that, that the Norwegian business is more competitive uh, in the international market because we have mutual interest in making our business competitive. So I think it's a good model for the government, for the union and for NHO. And I love this model, really. <laughs> So, in other words, you say it pays more off for the bosses yeah. to do it like this. Yeah, I think you have to have a system where everyone thinks it's a win-win-win system. And this system is very, very good for Norway. If you go uh, back to the 30s, we have uh, between 100 and 200 conflicts every year. So, a lot of strikes. A lot of strikes. No dialogue. Today, much dialogue, much trust between us. I think that's good news for Norway. And it's very important for Norway when we, the next years, and the year in front of us, shall uh, meet the uh, crisis, the climate crisis. We shall secure jobs. We have a rapidly change in the working life and the business. And for Norway, this Norwegian model, this three part diet collaboration is very important for Norway today and the year in front of us. Mrs. Hessen or Peggy. Uh, what's in it for the workers that you are representing? You are representing workers in all fields mm -hmm. uh, in 25 different trade unions mm -hmm. in Norway. Well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, it's um, a possibility to uh, make sure that uh, I have the influence uh, of uh, for my members, both to secure sustainable jobs, to secure a decent uh, working life, uh, to secure high incomes and a good welfare state. So uh, to me, this is uh, um, an important way to cooperate uh, on, the, on the three level, um, on a three level platform. But I think what is also important to understand with this model is that uh, the, the two part height uh, mm -hmm. collaboration, whether it is between uh, uh, the shop steward and the director, the management mm -hmm. at, uh, at the actual uh, plant or the actual uh, working place, or is the two partites um, collaboration also between me and uh, and Ole Erik? And if needed and if wanted, then we uh, then we connect also the third party here. So it's a it's the system in total. I think that is important to me. First and foremost, to secure um, uh, the uh, the income and the workplaces uh, for my members. Mm. Hadia, 
uh, what does the government get out of this model? It makes perfect economical sense. That's what the government gets out of it. I mean, having proper working conditions and a well-organized labor market, um, it uh, contributes to us uh, having some of the most productive workers in the entire world. I think OECD has rankings on productive workers, and Norway uh, has been second in, in those rankings for quite a few years, uh, which is a compliment to well, the, the well-organized labor market in Norway, to mm. LO and to NHO. Um, at the same time, um, it, it makes economical sense because um, building trust, having social cohesion in a society is very efficient, mm. uh, not only on an individual level, but also on a, on a company level, um, on a governmental level. Uh, it reduces social conflicts. Um, and uh, building that kind of consensus and trust among the social partners uh, also contributes into the policy making. It makes our policy suggestions, our re regulation suggestions better because uh, we get an opportunity to listen each other out at an early phase mm. of, uh, of uh, creating new regulations and making the amendments needed mm. in order for the regulations to be efficient. But shouldn't uh, employees and employers just be able to fix their problems on their own without government interference? Oh, but they do all the time. Yeah. Most of the time, uh, they, they fix their own problems, they have their own dialogue, uh, and most of the time the government is not needed. Uh, but on some areas, the, government's is, uh, the government is needed, especially when it comes to national policy, regulations, changes in le legislation, uh, or certain, uh, certain kinds of conflict resolutions. But most of the time, um, it's not even necessary for the government to be a part of the discussion. Mm. Would you like to comment on that, yeah. Eric? Uh, the three of us are very, very agreeing on, on this. But if you see, to the, if you see um, the collective bargaining, it's very important that uh, Peggy and myself has, uh, has this collective bargaining without the government. But sometimes mm -hmm. we invite the government to the table, and that's important. Mm -hmm. And in other uh, issues, political cases like energy and uh, the labor work, uh, education, it's very important mm -hmm. that we are sitting together. But when it comes to collective bargaining, it's very important that it's up to us. To us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Hadia, representing the government, wouldn't it be tempting just to make the rules and force <laughs> these uh, <laughs> two organizations to follow them? That would be very short-sighted. Yeah. Maybe it would give results in a very short uh, period of time, but when it comes to uh, long-term efficiency, uh, building trust, knowing each other, having the dialogue um, when it comes to creating regulations is, is, is the best way to go forward, in my opinion especially considering the fact that in the next decade we have huge challenges for our society that we need to deal with. Yeah. Demographical changes, um, but also climate change. Mm. And in order to be able to uh, find the right solutions on these areas, we need to collaborate closely uh, with the workers themselves and with the employers. Mm. Conflicts are inevitable. The workers want higher salaries, the employers want to keep more of uh, the profits, and both sides want more from the state or the government than the government might be willing to give. So you have conflicting interests. It can't always be as easy as it seems uh, now. Uh, so uh, what are the agreed upon rules when conflict do arise. Would you like to start, Peggy? Well, I think that's the, one of the important um, things with, the, with the Norwe this Norwegian model. So I, I used to <coughs> say that we have rules even how to behave when we don't agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a set of regulations, rules and regulations that we have develop, developed through the last 120 years, as it was said here, uh, um, 70 years ago, we were one of the poorest countries in Europe. We had the most uh, days lost in, in strikes. So the sets of regulations and rules that we have built together through negotiations that also tells us how to behave when we do not agree mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is something that I think we, we both uh, hold uh, high and, and, and respect. And, but it, it's also a set of institutions that are uh, uh, 
also a part of the model uh, that is um, official institutions like the mediator uh, if we don't uh, agree. Um, so we have actually also built a set of, of institutions together with the government um, that, uh, it, that, that helps to guide us when we, when we really uh, get into conflicts, which we do. Every yeah. now and then we do. But it's easier also, I think, to... To, to build trust when you know that you have rules on how to behave uh, mm. when you are in conflict. But how do you tell your own members they can't have higher salaries? Uh, I always work for higher salaries uh, for my members, but as one of my union leaders says, uh, we will never uh, bargain ourselves out through uh, the factory uh, doors. So, so this is to find the right balance uh, between uh, uh, sharing uh, the values that we that we um, that we um, create together. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it has also been uh, the way that we have uh, achieved, uh, I think, um, uh, good working conditions and also a high level of, uh, of, of income in Norway. So it is really a win-win uh, situation for all. But I'm sure a lot of your companies <coughs> wouldn't want to give as high salaries as Peggy is asking for. How are you convincing your own organizations to follow the rules of conflict? Because this system serves everyone. And we have, if you see this in a historical persp perspective, mm -hmm. we can see that we in Norway or in the Nordic countries, which have the same system, we see we have good economy, we have growth, we have good welfare. And this system has made that happen because we are loyal to the system. Okay, sometimes we have to raise the salaries, which is also good for the companies because they can have the uh, workers working, uh, working there for all their life. But sometimes we have to think we can't get higher with the salaries because it will make business coming out of the competition in the world. So this is a balance every day, every week and every year. And we fix it every year. And look at Norway. Mm. It's, a, it's a country where people have jobs, secure jobs, which is very important for everyone. Hadja, what does the government do when the workers decide to go on strike? Uh, there's a set of uh, regulations on how to deal with such a situation. Um, the state mediator, uh, for instance, has to be notified. Uh, and he or she may uh, prohibit the stoppage of work until compulsory mediation has been tried out. Um, and if mediation is terminated without a result or uh, without a proposal for a new agreement <coughs> or a proposal is, is uh, rejected, um, a strike or a lo <coughs> lockout may take place. Um, but then again, there is a regulation that says that if a strike or a lockout um, causes serious damage to society, <coughs> then the government can present a special act to parliament and end uh, the work stoppage. Uh, and the dispute must then be resolved by an arbitration board uh, called Rikslundsnemda. Uh, but the decision to ban a conflict and invoke the National Wages Board uh, is quite seldom done. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and the bar for actually doing this is quite high. I mean, serious damage to society means that you, um, most strikes and most lock lockouts uh, would uh, uh, would not cause that kind of damage, uh, so it's only in a very a very um, um, well only in certain situations where the government needs to take a few steps uh, in order to uh, to resolve the conflict through the National Wages Board. So the government almost never or seldom stops uh, the strikes. But how do you guys trust each other? <laughs> I trust this too because I think. In Norway, very few people in Norway. <laughs> and I think we often have the some common interests. Maybe we can have a discussion how we come there. But if you see the energy, you see the energy problems we have, <coughs> working together to find a solution which serves everyone. The same is, uh, if you see um, uh, the education. We really need our workers to have the right education. Then we work together. So I think that it's, it's, it's a trust, it's a key element in this conversation, actually, it's a key element in this structure. 
I think it's important that you build trust um, uh, when you're not in conflict. Yeah. And as Ulerik says, we have a lot of different subjects that is important to us to work together on. We are in the middle of a, a, a green shift when it comes to energy, which makes, uh, which gives us huge challenges in the future. So who is more close to discuss how to solve those challenges than the two of us as head of our organizations and also to involve the government in that kind of, uh, in that kind of uh, problems, how to solve uh, this country's challenges, that's when you build trust. And then you have to keep that trust uh, when, it, when, you, when, you, when you get into a conflict, because mm. we will get into a conflict on some stage. And then it's important that we have built trust uh, in between. Mm. Mm. And the kind of trust that we're discussing here now is not uh, the individual trust. Right. It is an institutionalized trust. Yes. I mean, I, I, there could be a different labor minister or a different leader of the employer's organization or the uh, laborer's organization. The trust would still be there because it's institutionalized amongst yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, and the results that that gives, um, it, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, it contributes to well-functioning func well economies. And, uh, and that's the reason why we put so much effort into this. It's sometimes called the Nordic supermodel. So in Norway, we have uh, made tripartite collaboration work for us in our own way. It's not necessarily possible for other countries to simply adopt our way of doing things. Every country has its own culture and way of doing things. But still, the fact that we have gathered here today confirms that we believe in this model. But what would it take for this model to work elsewhere? The floor is open. Well, just to start with, I think uh, one of the key issues here is a high level of organization yeah. uh, on the worker side, but also on the yeah. employer side. Yeah. Uh, it's difficult to imagine how you can build this kind of collaboration if you don't have, uh, um, if, if I didn't have my members uh, to, to back me through all these discussions, I have to have a mandate to, to uh, negotiate on behalf of my members. And I would guess that is the same on Ulerik's side as well. So a high level of organization, I think, is, uh, is uh, the most important. Yeah, yeah and the loyalty is very uh, important because you have to have many people being loyal to the system. Mm -hmm. And if we to our big organizations, the loyalty will be will rise. Mm. But I think it's very, uh, the question you're, you're asking is very good. Is this, uh, is this a model for other countries? Yeah, in, Nordic, in, in the Nordic countries, everyone is using it. I think it's something everyone should take a look at. If you, if you, when I meet my CEOs in the biggest Norwegian global companies, they often tell, tell, tells me that I miss the model in the other countries where we are operating, because it's a model for trust, it's mod, a model for developing the, the companies. But in Norway, we take it for granted. But mm. out in other countries, I think many of them could have been luckily to try it. I mean, they should try it. What about you, Hadia, when you meet uh, politicians in other countries? Do you think they can um, uh, adopt our way of doing things? I'm sure that the same way that we can learn from other countries, and perhaps there are things that, that we can export as well, that, that, um, that is um, knowledge that we have acquired through many years, and experience that we have acquired through many years. And I, and I really have to second what uh, Peggy said about uh, having a well-organized labor market and high level of organization on both both sides. Yeah. Uh, it contributes to, to representation, to legitimacy, uh, and it makes sure it makes sure that the uh, results that we actually get uh, is is um, democratically yeah. uh, well founded uh, because it is representing such a huge um, amounts of people and, 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 and many uh, many businesses. So in that perspective, from a governmental level, we've introduced um, uh, um, doubling the tax deduction in Norway uh, for trade union dues in just two years because we want to contribute to getting the organization level in the labor market up, um, making sure that we are strengthening the social cohesion in Norway and not weakening it in the years to come. Thank you very much, Hadia. 
og lærer ikke en Peggy.